Tonight's tinkering is accompanied by the Quick Fix Coffee Cream Ale from Bookstore Brewing. Very simple tasting notes on this one. Uh, coffee welcome, a silky feel, a smooth finish with a hoppy pinch. Hmm. So tonight I'm going to look at a circuit that I found on Reddit a few weeks ago. I mean, found on Reddit, I found a short video clip that somebody had clipped from someplace else and hadn't credited it, of course, so I don't know exactly who created this thing originally. But it uses a 555 and a handful of components to do this odd little chasing thing with, with some LEDs. I did not expect that from a 555. So I paused the video. Oh, I downloaded it so I could pause it and spend some time reverse engineering it. And here is what I came up with. So there's kind of two sections to this thing. There's the 555 over there. And let's actually start with that. We have a very, very standard, um, what do you call it? A stable multi vibrator. Basically this capacitor and these two resistors set the timing. Um, these two resistors being the same means that the charge and discharge speed of this capacitor are the same. So you're going to get a 50, 50 or 50% duty cycle. Um, so that's all fairly normal and standard pin three being the output. Of course, uh, we got 12 volts, um, he labeled them plus and minus, but it's really just a plus and a zero volt or ground reference. And then we have this bit of weirdness over here. So we've got the six LEDs down here, which are actually just two sets of three. The LEDs are in series and each one has its own resistor to ground or zero volts, I guess. Um, okay. I guess, uh, then we have a transistor, a PNP in this case. I don't know why, but my brain always works better with NPN, but regardless, we have a PNP transistor here with 56 K resistor in series with the base, just to limit the current as you'd expect. Then there is this little, uh, resistor capacitor circuit up there, 470 microfarad, um, between the emitter and, uh, the plus voltage rail. So basically that is just, I think it's just going to take some time to charge and discharge. So what I think that's doing is just pre creating a timing constant. Um, this will be switching on and off pin three being the output of the five, five, five. That's all cool. So then we will have a, uh, as this charges and discharges, we will have a voltage. Well, the charge anyway, um, when this is turned on voltage will come up on this thing from whatever it discharges to, to 12 volts. So that's providing a varying voltage here from nothing when this is turned off to, you know, ramping up to 12 volts. So what I think is happening is as this ramps up, um, let's just draw a little zero volts, 12 volts. So as this ramps up, it's going to hit the forward voltage of this red LED, which is, what's that going to be about one and a half to two volts thereabouts. So the red LED will turn on there. And then as the voltage ramps up, um, we got two volts there, but this led is going to need to reach its, uh, forward voltage as well before it comes on. So this voltage is going to keep ramping up to whatever its forward voltage is, then it'll turn on. And then this voltage will keep ramping up until it hits either 12 volts or this guy's, uh, forward voltage. So we got two ish volts for the red led, uh, for a pink led. I'm not sure what it is. Um, at least I'm assuming it's a pink led. That's what I was told by the color seeing people in my family. So let's see if I got some, I got some pink leds here. Is that pink? Sure. Probably. Uh, where is my, well, there it is. It's over there testing. Right. 
So that's almost three volts, 2.9. Okay, two volts there, and that's going to be 2.9 plus two, so just shy of five volts there. And then the blue will turn on once the forward voltage gets up to another 2.74 volts above that. So that'll be about 7.7 7 .7 volts there. So that, I think, is how those are chasing on in the little video the guy did. I am going to build this and see if that's actually what happens. One moment, please. Okay, I think that's right. So let's see what happens when I put power on it. Uh, 12 volts on the power supply over here. As you can see, power on. So this LED is just indicating, it's just coming off pin three. There we go. So when pin three is high, um, then these are all off when pin three is low. Yeah, that's that PNP transistor, right? So then here we go. When that goes off, these kind of come in. Let me zoom in on it. As I said, this is just showing what's happening on pin three, the output of the 555. So when it's high, that transistor is shut off and this resistor across the capacitor allows it to discharge. And then when this goes off, the PNP transistor turns on, which causes this guy to charge. And as it's charging, these slowly come up. And I'm not sure why it doesn't totally turn off. I'm wondering if I need a little bit lower resistor in parallel with that capacitor just to discharge it quicker. But regardless, this looks pretty much like what the guy was doing in his video. And that is kind of cool. I never thought of using the series voltage drops of each LED in, in sequence to, um, to have them respond to a ramping up voltage. That's kind of cool. Yet another simple little 555 circuit. And I mean, realistically, you don't need the 555 because all it's doing is just when you take this low, it's turning that on. So the charging of that capacitor, I think, has more to do with the current limit down here. So this 1K or these bunch of 1K resistors and the current limit of uh, the LEDs, which is about 20 milliamps. So I suppose if we put a bigger capacitor in there, it would take longer to charge. Um, if we put a smaller resistor in there, it would be faster to discharge, which is also why these guys aren't getting a chance to come right down to zero. You see here, when I don't have the transit or when I don't have the 555 in there, it comes up in, what is that, a second or so? And it takes longer to discharge, but those LEDs really do discharge down to nothing. But when I reconnect this to pin three to the output of the 555, then it comes up. It discharges, but these don't have a chance to get to zero before it comes back on again. That was just a fun, quick little circuit. Um, is it one of the million and one things you can do with a 555. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Um, it wasn't an earth shattering circuit. Of course, I was just satisfying my curiosity based on something weird and uncredited that I saw on Reddit. If you saw that on Reddit, or if you know where the guy that created that video that I uh, link that I kind of showed up in the beginning there. If you know where that came from, can you let me know down in the comments so I can give them some credit for this? Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, uh, comments, questions, etc., etc. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.